Now, when you talk about human rights in this country, there's been a huge focus on mistreatment of our elderly in aged care facilities and elsewhere around the country, with the Royal Commission looking at how we treat uh, people in our aged care system in this country at the moment. Later today, the first uh, interim report from that Royal Commission will be handed down. But earlier today, I spoke for, with uh, Ian Henschke, who's the chief advocate of the Australian Seniors Association, and he says it's time for the government to take action already seems to me that what the Royal Commission has discovered is a system that's broken, a system that's got a My Age Care website and, and uh, entry point into aged care which doesn't work well. Uh, we've got problems with staffing, we've got problems with care. We've now got to the point where we understand these problems. Of course, the next big step is what do you do about it? That's Ian Henschke earlier in the program. And the Health Minister, Greg Hunt, is with us live now, joining us from Perth. Thanks for joining us, uh, Minister. Just on that, I wonder if I can get your thoughts first up uh, on aged care. Obviously, it's not your direct responsibility as, uh, as a Health Minister, but the, the argument put there uh, by the uh, Chief Advocate for Seniors Australia that what Australia needs to do is focus much more heavily on care for the elderly in their homes rather than sending them off to institutionalised care. So uh, we'll receive the Royal Commission report uh, later today and uh, I'll be briefed on it uh, just before it's released publicly. Um, so I won't preempt uh, what uh, might be in that report. But I do say this, uh, that we called the Commission because we were deeply concerned. You know, the Prime Minister and the Cabinet were deeply concerned about aged care. We wanted to shine a light on the system, both to look at any individual cases coming, as you well know, out of the scandal of Oakton, which occurred in South Australia under the state Labor government, uh, but also at uh, cases of abuse or inadequate treatment around the country and systemic reforms. We don't walk into something like this without realising that uh, there are challenges. That's why we did it. In the meantime, we've got on and appointed an aged care quality and safety commissioner. Uh, instituted spot checks around the country, uh, delivered new standards, uh, delivered new uh, quality indicators that are mandatory, uh, as well as, I think, uh, to go straight to your point, increased by 25% in the last year alone the number of home care places. So home care for those that may not be involved with the system is where people are able to get the support at home rather than living within a, uh, a nursing home or a residential aged care facility. There is a national trend where people understandably are living longer, they're preferring to stay at home, and so uh, we're in the process of increasing over the current period the number of home care places by 160%. So a dramatic increase, but uh, we'll look forward to the report. And uh, their job was to be frank and fearless, and uh, that's uh, what I think has come through the evidence. Um, deeply concerning cases around the country and uh, we called it because we were concerned. Now you're right, of course you've got to see the report before you get into the detail of your response and it's not your direct responsibility but, and you mentioned quite rightly that your government and others have done more to put in place these home care services but do you agree that that is the thrust uh, that the policy might need to go in the future? that uh, because of cost imperatives and the wishes of people that there might be a lot more government action required there because while you've increased places, uh, uh, the reports are that the waiting list for these places is, is much longer, much greater than the additional, cost, uh, uh, the addi additional yeah. packages well, available. The, 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 uh, there's no question that home care uh, has been and must continue to grow. So we've effectively doubled the number of places uh, on our watch from 60,000 to uh, 125,000, but that's continuing to grow and uh, we'll continue to invest in that space. In addition to that, uh, there's uh, a level uh, below that for people with lesser needs called home support, and hundreds of thousands of Australians also benefit from home support. And one of the things we'll be looking at, and uh, I hope the Royal Commission addresses, is the relationship between residential care home care and home support. So we have a very simple continuum that people are able to get the support right across all three levels. And uh, uh, we've been adding an extra billion dollars a year, but uh, we know that this great transformation, the aging population that has been a, a demographic fact uh, is now with us and it's been foreseen and we're adapting to it. 
but it is a profound national challenge and that's why the Royal Commission was called to highlight the flaws, to identify the needs and to help chart the pathways fearlessly. Greg Hunt, there's a big focus today nationally on mental health. The Productivity Commission report mm. talking about 3.9 million Australians being affected by some sort of mental health condition and costing the economy hundreds of millions of dollars a day. What is going wrong with our uh, state of health in this country and the way we're dealing with it? Well, I think uh, what the report highlights is that uh, what we've also been saying, and so it's very consistent with what the government's been saying, what I've been saying, is that mental health can strike anybody. There are almost four million Australians in any one year who face a mental health challenge. It could be anxiety or depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, and uh, this can be a deep, profound challenge. And so uh, what we are putting to the states, I'm in Perth today for the uh, Council of Australian Government health ministers meeting is an offer to work in partnership for the first time, a true national partnership for an integrated mental health system from developing uh, resilience and prevention in young people to early diagnosis, early and better treatment, uh, support in the hospital system, particularly youth mental health wards, which I do hope that the states will take up. Uh, and then recovery for those people who've been discharged from hospital. We should be tracking with the consent of individuals, with support services for every single person in Australia who's been discharged from a state hospital for uh, suicidality or suic suicide attempt when they're in the recovery phase. And it's one of the things that I've identified and uh, one of the points of the Productivity Commission has been uh, the way in which we support people after they have uh, been discharged. And so this is, I think, a profoundly important report. It's, it's a draft report at this stage. It's seeking comments, so it's not their final report. But I think there's much in there which is uh, very valuable. And at the same time, I uh, want to note that uh, uh, what we are world leading in is uh, our youth mental health services. Uh, Headspace is a world leading program, and we've been investing 375 million in that, and we'll continue to support and expand the Headspace network as a principal national uh, bulwark and as a, an asset which helps every Australian family know there's a place to go. I think we all support the aims here. We can all see the problems with suicide, with some of the medical, uh, uh, medical issues at our hospitals and elsewhere, uh, and, and uh, drug use and, and, and other issues in our society. But are you worried, given there's so much public debate and focus on this now, we could be medicalising a problem too often or too readily when perhaps uh, counselling, family support, uh, uh, general resilience uh, might uh, intercept a lot of people? Oh, look, to, to be fair to the Productivity Commission, one of their important emphases is on exactly what you're saying, prevention and resilience, building in young people, but not just young people, people in all walks of life, the skills to cope uh, with some of the challenges. Uh, to recognise uh, that there are issues that are emerging and then to be able to understand how do people manage themselves, how do they cope with these challenges, but then also to overcome what is one of the greatest barriers and that is self-stigma. As a nation, we have uh, made enormous inroads on dealing with community stigma, the criticism of others. But self-stigma is where you or I feel unable to seek help because we're afraid of how others might perceive us. And that's not needed, but it's very much a reality. And so if people can seek help early, then it prevents this bottling up, it prevents the erosion, it prevents the deep dwelling, which can be a profound component of uh, uh, you know, acute mental health conditions. And so that early prevention, that early intervention of giving people the confidence to seek help they couple together and the, the Commission, the Productivity Commission has done a, an important job in highlighting them. Greg Hunt, just two other issues if I could get to, uh, some, uh, some feedback from you uh, from, uh, before we let you go. One, one is the push we're seeing now from the private health insurance industry and others, uh, the, GP, uh, uh, the GP section of the Australian Medical Association and the like, looking to extend the reach of uh, private health uh, cover so that it can cover 
uh, more medical procedures uh, delivered out and about away from hospitals by GPs. Are, are you looking, examining at the uh, possibility of reform here? I am looking at uh, what's called hospital in the home and uh, I've invited the hospitals, the private health insurers, the AMA uh, and other medical bodies to work together to put forward proposals with uh, technology, with telehealth, with all of these things uh, in just the same way that you were talking about home care for aged care, uh, there's both the capacity and the desire uh, for more treatments to be provided uh, for what are called outpatients or not within the actual hospital themselves and there is an opportunity to do that and that will often produce better outcomes uh, particularly in the case of mental health and orthopaedic recovery uh, those are the two leading examples which have been cited uh, by uh, the health and, uh, and medical sector and the community and so I think there is more that can be done because you have some old rules uh, which simply confine the system uh, to treatment in hospital and if we can uh, allow that we can get better outcomes but we can also have a, uh, a more efficient system which means uh, that rare combination of better outcomes but helping to be able to control any change in private health premiums which is a pretty important direction for the country. Now when we're talking in mental health there is a direct link uh, to the drought crisis that's gripping much of eastern Australia. Uh, so it must be enormously frustrating for you and other members of the government while you're trying to focus on that drought problem, which is a problem of agriculture, lifestyle, uh, um, um, financial support, and of course community and, and, and mental health. Uh, while you're trying to tackle that, you've got your nationals partners tearing themselves apart about who's getting the credit and not even ruling out leadership tilts at the deputy leader. Uh, look, uh my, my role in all of this is just to focus on the families and the communities in uh, rural and regional Australia and uh, I've never been drawn into those discussions uh, over uh, m my time in Parliament and respectfully I'm not about to change that. Would, I, would, I you, would you encourage them Michael, to at least focus on the main game then? They are your colleagues, uh, my your message, partners. <laughs> my, me my message to all my colleagues uh, at all times uh, is always to focus on the public. So uh, that hasn't changed in, in my time and uh, I don't see it ever changing uh, whilst I have the privilege to be involved in, in public life. And you know, at, at the end of the day, our task uh, is to provide the support uh, for farmers in Queensland and New South Wales and uh, other parts of Australia that are experiencing drought. I know in my own home state of Victoria, there are communities where uh, farmers are doing it tough, their families are doing it tough, uh, their uh, small towns are doing it tough and our task is to help them immediately, uh, to help the communities such as through the local government support grants that we provided, I think over 122, uh, and then um, to ensure that there is the resilience within those communities to be there to recover for when the rain returns and uh, I have heard some reports that uh, there are parts of Australia that are getting good rains which haven't had it for quite a while. That there are indeed. It's raining, at, uh, it's raining at Longreach, I'm told. We're going to cross up there later this hour. Thanks so much uh, Well, there you go. That's Greg. a happy note to finish it. on. Indeed. Take care, mate.